Listen, you shouldn't have to stretch your budget to buy jeans with a little give. High-end denim can cost hundreds of dollars, but bargain brands don't offer the same level of style and comfort. Yeah. You got you can't get some jeans that cost you hundreds of dollars and no. like have to do a juice cleanse to get into them. <laughs> totally. So Distilled, spelled D-S-T-L-D, they've revolutionized the fashion industry with their timeless luxury grade denim. So you get jeans that would normally cost you hundreds starting at just 65 bucks. Yeah. They eliminate these crazy markups because they refuse to work with middlemen. Refuse. They ship directly to you for free and guarantee the fit or they'll send you a new pair until they're perfect. Distilled jeans are built to last and will be a staple in your closet for years. They also have a bunch of fall jackets so if you're like into a classic denim or you want like a bomber jacket you can just expect the same level of quality okay and so for a discount go to dstld.com slash feral and you'll get ten dollars off your first order that's dstl wait d.com slash feral for ten dollars off bye thanks bye ali let me ask you a question yeah fire away dude what fire away dude oh (laughs) yes or no finding the right hair color for you ally yeah can be a challenge uh what color is my hair right now burgundy yeah was that on purpose no did i need to use e-salon yes you did oh i fucked it up oh wait (laughs) you can scratch that that no it's great e-salon offers professional grade (laughs) leave that in (laughs) <laughs> completely personalized hair color that's created just for you and delivered right to your door. Allie, you fucking need this. I need it so much. This is the last time I will color my hair without taking the steps to get the right color. I grabbed a color off the shelf. It was the wrong color. My hair is maroon now. Don't do it. Allie, do you love questionnaires? Yes. Here's a hair questionnaire. Upload your photo and a personal colorist will formulate your individually blended color from over 15 thousand pigments oh my god i know i need e-salon in a time machine to go back to yesterday (laughs) totally well they've got you covered there's a hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed if you're not happy Allie. oh god i need with your color it will give you a free reformulation or refund i think anything's better than what i did to myself before you look cute thanks dude but you know what? I like that the color doesn't fade. Like they have the grays covered. Because we get, I get some grays every once in a while. I mean, at 23 years old, I our know. gray is like pretending to start to come in. I know. It's probably because we're such big thinkers. We're so young. So you can visit esalon.com slash slumber party, all one word. And do that. You get 50% off your first order. So that's 10 bucks for your personalized hair color, which is crazy because the last time I got my hair cut- colored in a salon, it was like $180. Dude, you can do it your freaking self. I've been doing it my freaking self for years and years. Yeah, I just, I really got the wrong color. So I need to use eSalon. You get 50% off your first box at eSalon.com slash slumber party. So go do that. Don't don't be an Allie Ward. Send us photos too. Hashtag it at, I don't know, Allie in Georgia. Let's see your hair. Yeah, just tag us in it on Instagram. Let's see your pictures. Let's do it. I want to look at your hair. Bye. Feral Audio. Georgia? Ellie. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. That's not good. I'm in pajamas, so things are pretty good. No, I had to get up early today to move my car because there's a crane in my parking space. Which is why we're doing the podcast from my apartment. Yeah, and now I'm on your leather couch and I'm taking up the entire couch. It's comfy. I love it. Hey. Hi. This is Slumber. This is. What is it? This is Slumber Party with Allie and Georgia. Got it. You're Allie. I'm Georgia. Georgia, did you learn anything this week? As a matter of fact, I did learn something this week. I would love to know what that is. I learned that... There's compelling evidence to exonerate the rat for having spread the black, the <gasps> bubonic plague. No. Yes. And do you know what animal they think it is instead? That like, there's evidence that it's this other animal? Hold that on, was my heart's pumping. It? I know. I know. Um, um, another Everyone animal. knows that the Black Death was an epidemic and it killed like one third of the, was it like one third of the population of well, life? Can you imagine that? But okay, so, but it was in the flea on the rat. That's what they thought. So the carriers of the flea, not the not the house cat. No. Okay. Uh, possums, raccoons. Keep going. Uh, dogs. Gerbils. Your mom. What? Gerbils. What the fuck? Who's ever seen a gerbil? I don't know. According to a study, 
blah, blah, blah. Climate data dating back to the 14th century contradicts the commonly held notion that Europe plague <laughs> outbreaks were caused by a reservoir of disease carrying fleas oh hosted God. by rats. I'm sorry, but a troop of disease bearing gerbils yeah. is like the cutest thing I've ever heard in my life. I know. That's like a guinea pig that gives you I know. Uh, like a uh, cancer or something. <laughs> what? Um, it's just because of the weather patterns. They just didn't fit for rats, they realized. Wait, based on tree ring, Based on tree ring studies. Where are these gerbils now? Um, I don't know. Living thing? with us, it killed a hundred million people. What? What is a gerbil exactly? Is it a hamster? Probably. I didn't learn that. Hey, what did what'd you learn? I learned. I learned that gerbils are Isn't it crazy. Are bearers of death and doom. I love it. It's just wanna, never the guy you expect. You know what I mean? Never the guy. Rats are rats are like. Fuck you, man. Yeah. I've been locked up in here. Totally. Oh, my God. They should do cereal next season, but about rats. That would, what if they took that totally seriously and did like a, like rats got, oh, my God, I would love that. Rats are like, you're calling from the Maryland Correctional Institute. <laughs> yeah, you know, man, I just like, I wasn't even like on that continent in that century. <laughs> if you guys listen to cereal, you'll care if you're of not. Of course. Anyway. Well, we're moving on to the jinx, so. I know. Everyone's into this dismemberment shit. Okay, go. What'd you learn? Um, I learned what CAPTCHA stands for. Do you know what CAPTCHA is? No. So you know when you're, let's say that you're you're on Ticketmaster, uh-huh. and you're like, I gotta get these tickets for Britney in Vegas. Sure. I'm gonna pay four hundred dollars for them, but Jesus. you, or whatever. That that was hypothetical. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought that you knew how much they cost. But I don't know how much. I don't even know if Britney is still playing in Vegas or if she's like technically alive. Like I'm not <laughs> sure what her whereabouts are. Okay. But um, whenever you have to, uh, whenever you have to verify that you're a human on the computer <laughs> machine, it's like type in this insane. Um, a string of numbers yeah. or letters that you can barely read and it makes yeah. you feel weird and old to make sure that you're not another computer that right. you're a human being buying Britney sure. tickets that's called CAPTCHA I didn't know Do that you didn't know that? no did you, Dustin did you know that? everyone Dustin's knew that like, but me. I bought Britney tickets <laughs> <laughs> everyone um, knows that but me so CAPTCHA is like you know it's all squiggly though and yeah, you yeah, like yeah. do it wrong and then you're like god damn it yeah it stands for completely automated public touring test and Turing, named after Alan Turing. Alan Turing. And an Alan Turing test is like to make sh- to see if you're a machine or not. But I never knew. Wow. Completely automated public Turing test. And that was just Ch- Alan Turing was the was Benedict Cumberbatch in what's that movie called? Alan Turing is reincarnated as Benedict Cumberbatch, <laughs> and he plays a disease, a gerbil defying <laughs> disease man. <laughs> hey, let's ask our guest what she learned this week. I would love to do that. You guys, we're really excited. She's a, a performer and a writer and a comedian and ever so funny. And we are so stoked to have her here. Milana, we are going to ask you to pronounce your last name <laughs> for us. Fine Troub. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. I just say Fine Yeah, that was close, too. Okay. I wouldn't have corrected you if you said that. Do you know, Milana, um, we met you uh, recently. We were out at the mall. George and I ran into each other, and mm-hmm. then we ran into you. That's right. Yeah. And then later that day, I was watching the television, and I was like, there's Milana on the television. That's me. Because you're everywhere. I didn't know yeah. it was you when I met you either. Yeah, I look different, maybe. I'm not wearing a blue button down, and my hair isn't <laughs> in like a very proper Mormon. It's so weird to thing. be in all those... To see yourself oh, in these AT and T commercials. Yeah, you're, you're like in all of them, and you're the most adorable thing ever. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. ever. They're the most fun thing to do. That's awesome. Yeah. How do you fun. get free AT and T service? Yeah. <gasps> Whoa. Okay, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's really it's really nice to not not have to pay attention to a phone bill. Is really nice. Hell that's yeah! Great. Can you imagine though if you had like what if you just had like boost mobile and you had to pay for it on your own and they didn't hook you up can you imagine yeah i don't think they'd stand for that i don't think they. you had like a sidekick like a (laughs) t-mobile sidekick (laughs) okay so wait what did you learn yeah what'd you learn this week oh okay well first of all i think it's funny that captcha has the word completely in front of it it's like totally (laughs) automated like it's not half automated (laughs) it's completely automated (laughs) like so freaking hella automated it should be totally (laughs) automated (laughs) that's a good point drastically automated (laughs) Um, I learned that there are two parts of your body well two parts of a man's body one part of a woman's body that can get an erection what what? actually I guess two parts on a woman's body so on a man's body the 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 dick the dick that is that the technical (laughs) capital D and on a woman's body the clit can get a little bit of an erection right yeah if you've got the right person handling it, am I yes. right? It also just happens automatically sometimes in the middle of the night. Like, like I a, didn't know that. Yeah, you just get like a little bit of a you swelling can, down there. It fills wow. with blood. I do have a lot of uh, 
<laughs> blood? No. Never clits? mind. Go on. <laughs> I'm not going to finish Georgia that has sentence. 17 clits. This is what she's well, keeping. I won- I'm not going to tell you guys what I have a lot of, but I want you to wonder. You have a lot of sex dreams. I do have a lot of sex dreams. Oh, hey. Oh, that's so fun. You don't it's talk about it a lot, though, because they're about me and it feels weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. No. I so have sex dreams about me, too. Go on. What's what's the other one? Um, Your nose gets an what? erection when you have a cold. Your <gasps> nose fills with blood. Like, the reason it gets red like that and swells is because... A rushing of blood. It is an erect nose. Whoa. So when you have a cold, you have a nose boner for a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's nose hot. boners. That's what this is called. This so when you blow your nose boner, <laughs> oh my god, you blew your wad. Blow your nose wad. That's got to be a, someone's thing, right? That they're really into. Like if there's people into like gross stuff, that's got to be like snot's got to be one of them. Yeah. Oh, people are. There's a fetish for really like name a thing and then try and figure out if there's a fetish for it. Like whipped cream, sure, of course. Like, Have you looked yourself up on Wikipedia? Uh, yeah, on another podcast they like pulled it up and showed. Oh, it then to I don't me. want to talk about it. Yeah, no, we don't no, want to do kidding. anything that they've done. Wait, you guys both have accounts on WikiFeed? You do too. You don't? I think I... I've looked it up. You do, I promise. I think maybe there's like a bunion enthusiast I've had there. dreams about it. <laughs> oh, no. What are, when did you have bare feet where someone put it on WikiFeed about um, you, Melana? I think I like posted an Instagram where I maybe was like in sandals and then... Um, <laughs> they take the most innocent photos that yeah. you're like, here's my cat on my legs. Yes, yes. And they're like, I jerked off to that. <gasps> Mm-hmm. There's one of me like on like a still from like my YouTube talk show where I'm wearing sandals and they put that up and oh and they rate it. I know. Oh, yeah. And but they like I'm... comment like nice arches. Hey, she's <laughs> got great. Like hate no. the tattoo, but dig the nice arches. arches. I mean, I do have great arches. Though. I have flat feet. Actually, oh. you perverts. <laughs> <laughs> People are into flat feet. <laughs> Your feet don't get erectile tissue. They're <laughs> no. flat. Should we ask a slumber party question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's ask. Let's ask. Um, what do you want to ask? Do you have an internet crush on anyone? Do you have a crush on anything or anyone? It doesn't like have a, to be like. It doesn't have to be a person. Like you could have a cat that you're like Instagram that you like. Is there someone on the internet that you have a crush on? Or a hashtag you like, you're like are obsessed with? Like that you find um, yourself going There's down a, a hashtag hole. that I think is hilarious. Um, it's hashtag bleast. It's people who wanted to write hashtag blessed, but spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. No. That's like, that's like all the quotes that you see. Like, I love when a man wears colon. <laughs> <laughs> I love when I, I love when I walk by him. I don't know why I got urban all of a sudden, but I love when I walk by a guy and I can smell his colon. <laughs> There's a whole series of people who meant to spell no. cologne and spell colon. <laughs> Which sounds like something I would do, so I love it even more. Do you know there's you know that there's a fetish for colon smelling though? Absolutely. Oh, like, that's another Definitely. wiki page. Bleast is it what is it? Bleast. Bleast. It's just one S. It's blessed with one S. Oh, I'm looking it up right now. Uh, the people on that must be just incredible. Oh, you know what? Maybe they're just multitasking. Maybe guys. they are ble- bleast. Maybe they're they're grabbing a Java on their way to their job <laughs> and they're just firing off some some grams after they get out of the subway. There's a whole like I, I typed in bleast on the hashtags on Instagram and there's like bleast day, bleast Sunday, bleast life, oh my bleast god. with the best, oh no. bleast beyond measure. Oh, oh my god, I love it, you guys. That's there's this inspirational quote. That's what but I, people who put blessed like earnestly, not the ones like Chelsea Peretti who puts it like yeah. as a joke, but yeah. who earnestly put blessed like they they must be fascinating human beings of. I know a, I I had to expunge a person from my Instagram because there were too many. There were there Hashtags. would be like there'd be like a. I don't know. I'm tr- like it'd be a picture of a mailbox, and then it would just be like grateful, beautiful, thankful, daily, <laughs> daily beauty, day. And I'm like, okay, you guys, this is fucking mailbox. Like just any any object. And I finally there were a lot of like, I'm the luckiest girl. I'm the luckiest girl. Oh. My man. And I was like, I'm just going to very quietly just back out of the room. Do you ever wonder <laughs> if they you. just like figured it out? Like they're just happier and gr- more grateful for the simple things. I we're know, just, like how, I know. how, on, how true does that, is that? Yeah. Dude, none of us yeah. do it, but we're not, but we don't feel blessed probably. I, I feel th- really grateful for yeah. a lot of things. I guess I just don't share it on my social media. But if you're going to post something anyways, clearly it's something you enjoy and feel good about. And want to remember. Right. You know what I so think you're it just... is? I think if someone were like, here's this mailbox and I feel so grateful to be alive, I'd be like, fuck yeah, I'm going to double tap that. Mm-hmm. But if you hashtag it so that other people can see 
what right. you're great. You know what I mean? Like, so, don't market your gratitude. It's marketing. You don't need to market your, you don't need to hashtag <laughs> for more likes. You don't need to be like, grateful, beautiful, simple things. Likes Insta day. Likes. Insta, Insta like, photo yeah. of the day. Don't troll for likes. If so you're you so don't grateful. like blatant yeah. marketing in like on Instagram. Yeah. Let me like it. Let me like it or not. What about a simple one like vintage? Because I look at vintage. Hash the hashtag vintage a lot. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you're going after your. That's actually a rabbit hole that you would go down. Or vintage kitchen. Holy shit, I go, I go insane. When was the last time you just wanted to see? Like you just went on like I'm the luckiest girl to see all the other luckiest Never. girls. Never. That's exactly. the same thing. <laughs> Blessed. I think it's like if if it if it's a hashtag that will help people discover things, great. But if you're just doing it because you want to show off you your want life, people to like you're your fucking asshole. Yeah. Did you guys hear about when um, the UCB Sunset Theater opened and they took over a hashtag for a wedding? Like, yeah, I forget what it was. It was like, it was like, you know, Chris and Charlie get married and they made, they hashtagged all of the UCB opening party photos. Chris oh and Charlie my God. Married. Like and during their, there was their, their wedding was the same day. Yeah. I think it was the same day. Holy shit. And those people got so <laughs> that mad. Is... They would just comment on all of the pictures like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is not cool. <laughs> this is our special day. You weren't at our wedding. Oh my God. What, who, what kind of photos were they posting? Oh God. Just photos of like them hanging out on the dance floor doing bits whatever oh you know God. stuff improvised oh God, I love it I wonder where that <laughs> wedding was I, wonder- I think it was like an Armenian couple in Glendale oh but it was in LA I think oh so. they could hunt you down then they could they zip could. right over and be no. like if you're gonna use our hashtag then you have to come bring us cake or something <laughs> that's inc- I love that idea yeah wouldn't that have been amazing if they had a sense of humor about it and yeah like, why don't yeah. you just come over and then you can really hashtag right. it right that would be nice or if they took the after party to UCB Sunset <laughs> can someone yeah, please write a space? rom-com write a rom-com about this you guys Let's do it. <laughs> yeah and that's Just... how the best man meets his the improvise that's how the best man gets into improv yeah no, and no then everyone is. hates and then him and Amy Poehler live happily oh ever after God. and there's an all-male improv troupe because a lot of them are and they meet up with all the bridesmaids because they're all single because they're always a bridesmaid <laughs> and then at their wedding they say do you take this person yes and, and. <laughs> Oh, sorry. It was just right there for me. I had to take it. It was a button and I fucking took it. Oh, it was God. cheap. I hope that the improvisers actually do say that and then like mug to the audience. There's got to be like one teacher <laughs> who met his girlfriend or his wife or, you know, I, that I, now I'm saying that all teachers are men and I don't mean that. There's got to be one teacher who met her husband in her class. Right. And they did that. Does the, does the guy... Does the minister be like, can I get a suggestion from the audience? Oh, my like, God. That would be the worst. <laughs> so tell me, tell us about doing improv, because you're an improviser, and you studied at UCB. Yeah. Now, let's talk about your history a little bit. You were born not, ooh, Georgia, Georgia is succumbing to gravity. Go. You were yeah. born not in America. You were born in a place with a lot of Zs. One Z. One Z. Yeah. I was born in a onesie. Oh my okay. god, that would be so cute. <laughs> I came out in just a slime covered onesie. <laughs> I was like a silkworm. <laughs> it was disgusting. <laughs> oh, that image. In a placenta cocoon. Ew. It's so gross. Now, is it Uzbekistan? Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Yeah. And how old were you when you moved to Morocco? I was three. Really? Yeah. Tiny baby. So, how do you speak kind of, many languages? I just speak Russian and English. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I really like it. I grew up like not so far from here in West in, Hollywood, in right? In West Hollywood, in like the the Russian neighborhood. Oh, so nice. I, I kept my roots. Deep. Ooh, I love the Russian neighborhood. What? Yeah, you seem down to earth for someone who grew up in Los An- in that specific area, West Hollywood. Thanks. What do people who grew up in that area? What are they? What do you assume them to be like? I assume them to be like, fuck, who knows? To have like a like a like. Like a really ritzy keychain or something? Yeah, I guess that's yeah. not cool. To be either really, really... On mine. To be, like, really yes. fucking, like, Kim Kardashian or to be, like, you're either Kim Kardashian or you're, like... A Soviet. Or you're Iggy, you're Iggy Pop. Like, there's no... Imbe- <laughs> like, you're one of the two. Yeah, so, I think a lot of my friends actually ended up being close to that. I think I was kind of grossed out by it. I don't know what it was. I definitely tried to not be that. I think there was a conscious effort to like rock music yeah. or like like things that people you know just explore other things that weren't so popular and then I also really liked nature and I think that's where I like was really drawn to living in LA is that there's so much of that people don't know that don't about know. LA yeah you know you nature. can get 
This is not. You can get ticks and Lyme disease in like Griffith Park in LA. It's great. I think it's so <laughs> great that about how LA great has it is. more mm-hmm. nature and Lyme disease than you would ever imagine. It keeps us grounded, you know. When it we're like we're in high socks. and mighty. Uh, how many Twitter me. followers do you have, and how bad are your fleas? <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Lyme. <laughs> Hashtag Lyme life. Hashtag <laughs> Lyme blessed. <laughs> yeah. Um, wait. Uh, let's do another slumber party question. Um, okay. I was gonna ask. But I did want to ask though. Um, yeah. If you've been back. I have. I was back, back. I was back in 2000. To Uzbekistan. Yeah. That's so dope. I, yeah. It was really cool. The food there, you guys, you would love. Oh, my God. What is it? Fish? Well, so Uzbekistan is like this. It, it's kind of a phenomenal land because it's completely landlocked. Um, but the soil is so rich with minerals. Anything you plant there will grow. Wow. And they have four seasons and the they have four seasons. I love saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best. They have a great spa. <laughs> uh, so they like the tomatoes, you, you like bite into it and they're like sweet. They're almost like apples and the peaches, you, the, the skin just comes right off. Like it's all Ugh. just the, the eggs have like these really bright orange oh yolks, my God. It's just really quality ingredients. At least when I was there, it was my- like this. There wasn't a lot of like hormones or chemicals and everything and so it's just really amazing food and it's so cheap because it's a very poor country it's wow. i don't know if it's considered third world or what. how come how can they do that without a lot of money and we can't fucking figure that out is it because we're mass producing is that why my parents uh li- lived on a Shtetl? moshav in israel in the it's a moshav or it's like a it's like a um what's the other one like a kibbutz it's like a kibbutz but you have your own space it's like so they had tomato plants and like both of them and they can't since they came back they fucking can't eat tomatoes because they're like it will never taste as good as i had shakshuka for breakfast really (laughs) that sounds like that sounds like an ailment (laughs) i got shakshuka for breakfast over the bad case of shakshuka (laughs) it's a it's eggs cooked in like a tomato sauce oh it's like a baked egg dish right yeah yeah did you make that did you make it no i went to an israeli restaurant for breakfast (gasps) you got up early enough to go to breakfast and now you're doing a podcast in the I know. Morning? I dropped my sister off at school in the morning. That's oh, so right. cute. 16 years old, you were saying? Yeah. 16. So what's the, or no, don't tell us the age difference because then, well, you know, your wiki feet Well, I was thinking like how much I would hate to be a teenager and how cool it is that I can like go somewhere and have breakfast. Totally. Oh, Ugh, yeah, right. You gotta do whatever school. you want as an adult. The thought yeah. of going back to high school makes me want to cry. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I dropped out of high school. I couldn't do it. Yeah? I didn't like it at all. I almost well, didn't you were acting professionally what? by that yeah. point, right? I was acting a little bit, but not not enough to like warrant not going to high school. Like, I wasn't <laughs> missing just, like, enough. To- fuck this place, yeah. basically. Yeah. Why didn't you finish high school? Yeah. I oh, I did, but I had gotten into so much trouble throughout high school. Like I was a really bad kid. That by the time I I did graduate, by the skin of my teeth, and as the big fat principal who was a dick <laughs> handed me my diploma on stage, on stage, he said, "Who'd have thunk it?" Oh, fuck that guy. What an asshole. Can you correct his grammar? Be like, <laughs> First off, how did you get your diploma? Yeah. Big yeah. fat man. Funk. Not that fat has anything. I mean, I don't want to fat shame anyone. You can fat shame your principal, though, because he was a dick. Okay, but don't dick. shame him about his fat. Shame him about his grammar. Yeah. And okay. Also, is. he could have been a healthier example sure. to his students. Sure. Speaking of Chakshuka, what yeah. is your secret? Nobody is around. You're oh. alone. Your roommate's not home. It's getting weird. It's late at night. You want a snack. And it's like your like secret favorite snack. Oh, it's not even a secret. It's the thing I love. Bring it. It's the thing I'm, I was going to talk about loving on this podcast. You can, mm. you can pick something else to talk about love or you can share it. You can love I a I just later. love cheese so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I eat it all the time. Like everyone who works with me knows that I have this problem. <laughs> I I eat all the raw cheese. I I don't like. I like really like fancy cheeses. What's your like ideal cheese setup? Like you get a cheese plate and this is what it looks like. Yeah, like maybe a raw cheddar, mm-hmm. Gruyere. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't love blue cheese, but that's maybe the only like fancy cheese that I don't like. And then, um, hmm. Goat cheese would be great. What about what kind of cracker and what kind of like thing that you put with it? Yeah, is there a ap- is mm, it like a board honey, of like, like honey um, apricots? What's that thing called? Um, I wish I could help you. Cocaine. No, like on. <laughs> no, I'm just I know. I'm like I should know this. <laughs> this is the giver. I'm just sending you the image. Um, the 
you know, where the honey grows. The not the hive. The comb. The comb. Oh, the comb. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like eating cheese and honeycomb. I is take the a best. jam or a jelly. Let's Me too. do it. Not jelly. That's for fucking poor people. Like a. <laughs> <laughs> Send all hate mail to Allie and Georgia at gmail.com. That was Georgia. <laughs> that was definitely Georgia. Uh, jam. A good fucking jam. Cherry jam or with a brie. Or crackers they have at Trader Joe's that have berries in them. Do oh, yeah. About the Allie, really you, the, the rosemary. The ones? They're like rain. I don't know what the brand is. Is it oh, the I rosemary cranberry? About. Remember those the ones? Cranberry in them, yeah. I like hitting a chewy patch in a cracker. Me too. I'm like, what are you doing here? I'm like, yeah. just hanging out in this cracker. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's good to see you. Yeah. It's good to see you, man. What a pleasant good surprise you. you are. Yeah. Take care, man. Take care. <laughs> Allie, have you been eating anything weird? Oh, what's the weirdest thing I've eaten recently? Um, my my uh, refrigerator is d- disaster right now. It's like all Izzy <laughs> soda because <laughs> for recipe testing. And then uh, we went away and I came back to just a bunch of lettuce that was just like Ugh. so sad. Just just it's lettuce massacre in there that I didn't eat. But um, I tried grilled romaine for the first time this weekend. It's Sorry. good. What? Grilled lettuces. Yeah, it was really good. Really? Yeah, it's yeah a and then thing. it just gets soft and you use it to wrap things and okay. Lightly cheese grilled. and meat. Yeah. So it's not like, but it's like, I'm sorry, it's it retains its crunch. Yeah, it's it's kind of like brown and soft, and it tastes really great. Yeah. It kind of tastes a little sweeter. Do you know that romaine gets a totally bad rap? Totally. Super bad rap, and it's like better for you than kale. Yes. No way. Romaine. Yeah. I know. It seems like designer iceberg. Yes. But it's actually very good for you. It's so weird. It's crazy. I thought that the darker a vegetable was, the healthier it was for I'm you. I'm sure it's got more antioxidants and chlorophyll in it, but I don't know. Romaine's got some baller minerals or some shit. It's the new thing. I Look got. it up, baller you guys. <laughs> um, I don't know what I've been eating lately. You know what I did is I love, you know, we were just talking about green leaves. We both love green leaves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a vegan Thai place in our neighborhood. Love it. So, so good. good. Please. I had my birthday there last year. Shut up. Good for you. Yeah, because it's like a cheap place. Everyone pays like $11 mm-hmm. and you can They'll order bring you a chicken fresh, nuggets. Co- I know. <gasps> pancakes? I know. It's a vegan Thai place and they have like banana like pancakes. It's so, they have breakfast Sweet burritos too. Fries. Oh, it's so yeah. good. But you know when you get the fresh rolls and they're wrapped in rice paper mm-hmm. and it's the same texture as like a room temperature dick. <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> like a... That was Allie. That was not Georgia. <laughs> it is though. That it's was like this. It's like... <laughs> And, and it's kind of like flaccid and skin like. Yeah. I it's, get what you mean. It's Absolute. like a foreskin. It's like a 72 degree flaccid dick, but it's delicious. Yeah. And you dip it in peanut sauce. And just like you would. If you were to put a real dick in peanut sauce, I'd probably be like, I'll put it in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Way more delicious. I've I mean, seen you fucking whore some fucking, I don't know. I just dick into your mouth. Not dick into your mouth. You could go on the other other way. Do that? You are close. Well, New Year's Eve. It's and... Only if it's covered in peanut sauce. <laughs> I've seen you eat a peanut sauce by the spoonful. Yeah. At a know. restaurant, and you're just like, you're like acting like nothing's going on, and you're just spooning the yeah. peanut sauce into your mouth. That's it. And it's like no one comes up to me and says, bitch, that's a condiment. Because I don't even <laughs> look behind my shoulder. I don't even care. I just, yeah. but they're. But their spring rolls are great. I mean, spring rolls anywhere are great. But I got the paper to make them at home, and it is difficult. <laughs> it is like you soak it in water. They they come like a flat plastic pancake, and you put them in water, and then they get really pliable. But it's like handling tissue samples, and it is uncomfortable emotionally. At what point are you just going to say fuck it and dip that into something and eat it just like as it is? I made some disaster spring rolls that were just like Chernobyl rolls, and I still – and I ate them with peanut sauce anyway. What would happen if you made it soft – like you, you dipped it in the water and you got it all skin like, mm-hmm. and then you fried that. That's a wonton, yeah, that'd be great. Is that what that is? That's a wonton. They use that same kind of paper. Yeah, a wonton wrapper. You just I think it's a little different, is it? But I don't, I don't want to say definitively. Good. Well, maybe I'm. But if anyone is good at making spring rolls at home, and you're like, ugh, just tweet at us and or well, email us. The fried <laughs> spring rolls that are like thinner than egg rolls. No, right? we'll figure this out, you guys. Oh no, I've only had egg rolls. Oh, they have spring rolls that I really dig, like at Chinese restaurants. That this is are just going to be the spring roll okay. episode. Anyway, you guys, you guys, it's going to be called spring rolls. So let's Ali finally Jordan, move on have from spring rolls. Have you eaten anything weird recently? Um, I've been like trying to eat healthy because of my stomach. And okay, let's do this. We have laid out on the table. I talked about this a couple episodes oh. ago. Shots of aloe vera juice. Because oh. I have this stuff, Lily of the Desert. Uh, balances stomach acidity natural. It's stomach formula, aloe vera juice. I'm so down for this. And it's got all the stuff in it. I'm going to make you guys all take a shot together. Dustin, here's a shot for you. Dustin, our podcast producer. Get in on that, Dustin. Okay. He's a, I feel like a, like a, 
like boys, especially like boys who smoke and drink whiskey, like I, this aloe vera shot's going to change your whole life. Yeah. It's going to erase your whole past. Do you yeah. need a chaser? There's cookies. Chase it with a cookie. Okay. <laughs> Here you go. Cheers, it's, you guys. It's viscous and it looks like the color of a, of sewage. Well, I am. <laughs> I'm I so am. sorry. Here we go. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh, shit. Allie's going to throw up. Man, I kind of like it. What's Are wrong with okay? me? Are you okay? I like it, too. Oh, my God. I almost regurgitated that on your couch. I get a quick, like, uh, gross, but then I'm fine with it. I'm sorry. Here, eat a thing. Want a thing? Eat a thing. Oh, that tasted like bile. Allie was face down on the couch. Oh, really? it's minty, though. Th- it's because there's peppermint in this one. Oh, that's a horrible idea. You like this, it's Mona? Almost... This tastes like bile. It tastes like if you ate a tube of toothpaste and then threw it back up in your mouth. <laughs> that's true. You're right. It oh does kind of taste like that. You are completely and I'm okay correct. okay with yeah, it. Yeah. That's Dustin, exactly what, does Dustin what it tastes like. Dustin? I drank worse stuff last night. That oh. was not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, I... What's uh, it going to do to us positively, though? It's going to help your stomach and digestion and skin look better. Mm. It's really good for you. And I've been so I've been eating that. Mm. That's a cool thing. Um, what? You were like so can unhappy. You, do you have to do what we just did and drink a shot of it? Or can you mix this in like pudding or some shit? I mean, why? <laughs> what bother? I feel like just take a shot of it. But also, oh, it's not God. as cold as it would be normally. I think that helps it a lot, too. No, Nothing? No, I, you're not going to. I was. There was one moment where I was like... I this saw it in your face. Down. I've seen this you throw up, going down. and I saw it. You have seen me throw up. <laughs> You've only thrown up like three times in your life, and I've fucking seen them. And it's probably <laughs> probably been my fault. Lord. All of them. Well, I feel like I'm better for having done it. Yeah, we're healthy now, you guys. We're healthy. We can eat anything we want. Everything um, is an acquired taste, right? Yeah. Like green juice is disgusting, but we an acquire we acquire a taste for it. I love it now, and it weirds me out. Yeah. Like I en- actually like the taste of it. Now. Alcohol is disgusting. Yeah. The first time you try it, but you grow to like it. What about coffee? How long did it take you before you accepted coffee as your lord and savior? I like wanted to like coffee mm. since I was a kid. I thought it was a grown up thing, mm-hmm. and so I started with mochas and then transitioned into it. And now I could drink it black. <gasps> I, that's what that was my goal. I was like, I'm gonna fucking drink black coffee. That's gonna be my thing. And I remember the first time I ordered it, and I was like, fucking drink it, bitch. Mm-hmm. Really? And now I love it. Mm-hmm. You guys are like Ice marathoners. Black coffee is the best. Ice black. I don't like, I just like, even when it's hot out, give me a black cup of coffee, hot. Oh. And I'm so happy. Mm-hmm. That's like being like, I'll take a milkshake, but hold all the ice cream. <laughs> it's like the best part of a coffee is that it tastes like you're being bottle fed. I want to taste Delicious like, a, I want it to taste like I'm a sailor <laughs> and I just need to like get, uh, wake up. Why do you want to hurt yourself <laughs> with this like aloe sweet vera juice? Drinks. I like and sweet cookies and sweet people, but, but not, not sweet beverages. Really? Hmm. I think that's good. This is that is going to keep you healthy because I can't. I'm like want a diabetes IV into my mouth all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Diet Coke is your like. I'm so good about it. I haven't had one in forever. I know. I know. I used to drink a lot of diet. Do you drink any diet garbage? Very rarely. That's good. Very rarely. Like if I have something that's equally garbage, like if I have like a shitty burger. Mm. Then, like, I need the soda to help wash it down because, like, you're not supposed to be eating that. I didn't mean to <laughs> diet shame you, Allie, diet coke shame you, but sushi is not the same without coke to me either. Oh, I get weird. It. Uh, since I was a kid and I went to sushi. Oh, as... You're weird. Well, I'm you're such a freak. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm diet coke shaming you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but regular coke, not diet. I fucking hate diet coke. Hmm. Yeah, it tastes a little funky. I've been I've been good about not drinking it for the last, like, year. Hey, let's I found talk my about... face gets less bloated. Oh, weird. Yeah. So take that tip Sorry. and shove it up your <laughs> colon holes. <laughs> your mm. cologne. Your cologne holes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you for making that connection. I am pleased to have you guys. <laughs> uh, hey, um, ghost story. We heard you have oh, yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm Bring so excited. So, um, so I have a friend who... Um, who said that there were ghosts in our house. So she was very convinced of it. She, um, what kind of friend is she? Is she a liar? No, she's a great person. She's like an established producer. She has a dog that she loves and is responsible for. She's a good friend. She shows up for people. She's future me. She's what I want to be. Yeah. She's everything I want to be. She is a lot like she's a role model. No, I'm saying she's my, she's my goal. She has a dog and a house and she believes in ghosts. And and she's successful. I think it was an apartment. But okay, never mind. <laughs> so she goes like down sense. a notch. Um, so she was telling us that there are ghosts in her place and um, in her attic. And I mean, she was just hearing people walking. Um, she would leave to go to work and come back. And her dog had like been acting really strange, like flipping out. And she wasn't sure what that was about. Ooh. 
there were scratch marks <gasps> on the doors. Stop it. Oh, she has a dog. And yeah, she has a dog. So maybe it was the dog. Okay. But it was like really intense okay. scratch marks that her dog had never made before. Oh, my God. Um, and so she stopped sleeping there. So she would go sleep at like a friend's place or something wow, like that. Wow, that's heavy. I'm also still day. impressed that her apartment has an attic. Continue. <laughs> yeah. And um, and so one day she goes back there and she goes to take a shower and the hot water doesn't work. And so she calls the plumber and she's like, dude, what's the problem? And he's like, oh, your gas isn't working. And so she calls the gas guy and he's like, yeah, you have a gas leak in your apartment that has been poisoning your <gasps> brain and your dog uh, for the past three months. This is what I no. fucking always say. That ghosts are fucking you perceiving shit wrong because maybe you're being poisoned. No. That's the so gas leak. she was told there was no ghosts or anything. <gasps> Everything was just her dog going crazy because her dog was getting gas poisoning no. when she was at work this all day. This is the best ghost story I've ever heard in my oh. life. And... She was losing her mind. The, all of the noises, everything she heard was her just imagining the craziness. Allie looks so distraught. I'm so heartbroken. Because you wanted a real ghost. I wanted to know that there are ghosts that are juggling their junk at her in the middle of the night because they were like, someone wronged them. That is crazy mm -hmm. that she knew intuitively not to stay there. Yeah. Something's wrong. Well, well she was scared. She was, was scared carbon, of the ghosts. Was it carbon monoxide situation? Yeah. Holy shit. Good gracious. Did that, she get a rebate on her rent at all? I don't know. <laughs> but if you die Let's from such a stupid thing, like that that bums me out. Yeah. Because you have to have a carbon monoxide uh, alarm detector. in your, yeah, detector in your apartment now in LA. Yeah, I have one. Which is like. I heard that that scent that comes out when you leave the gas on is something that's added so that you know you leave the gas on. Oh. That's not true. a real thing. That's methane, yeah. Wow. They add, they, they add a scent to it. So you're like, what's that funky smell? Because otherwise like it would just be. Smell odorless it reminds me of bunsen burners in high yeah. school mm -hmm. i mean it also reminds me of farts but it reminds me of bunsen <laughs> burners too. maybe i just like the smell of farts mm -hmm. love i love a good fart nozzle <laughs> also known as a the bunsen smell burner. of colon um but <laughs> the smell of colon <laughs> I love smelling a guy's colon. Don't you mean cologne? No, I fucking mean colon. <laughs> I, that's my thing. Have you checked out Natural. wiki colon? Yes. Yeah. You like What's snot and I'm into fucking colon. <laughs> Not fucking colons, but oh. smelling colon. I actually was at a dinner party recently. Uh-oh. Say and it. the girl's like, I got this new boyfriend. Da, 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 da. She's telling me about him. Where'd you meet? Ooh, oh, show me pictures. Very cute. Then she started talking to me about all of their butt play. What? And hmm. I was like, well... This is a lot. Of, I cannot. I cannot wait to meet him so that I can pretend like I don't know anything about his butthole. Where he yeah. puts his dick, his butthole. Yes. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. No. That's a lot at a dinner party. That's a lot anywhere. That's a lot in therapy. I know. I was like, I, but I was like, it was the conversation was so interesting, going so well. I was like, oh, he sounds so cool, and then it was like, whoosh, just took took like a. a, a Sharp turn up a butt crack, <laughs> <laughs> and I learned a lot about it. I don't know. Um, how are you? How are you feeling about boys? Buttholes? About boys? About boys and their buttholes? How oh. is LA treating you in the boy scene? You can just say thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, I mean, fine. I'm not in a relationship, and I'm not in love, and I, I guess I wish I were. So maybe thumbs down. Are you a relationship person? Yeah. Yeah. Me too, I think. I date a lot because I keep looking for the relationship, That's but I don't mean to date a lot. Totally. You're like, you? You? Yeah, you? maybe it's you. Okay, let's... Oh, well, the first one didn't go, like, incredibly well, but maybe we were both just a little uncomfortable. Let's try again. And then the second one is like, okay, that was equally meh. But, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe we got to get the jitters out. And then by the third one, I'm like, yeah, no, that's definitely... That's a fucking great system, out. I feel like. How do you... Do you give them a slow fade? Because you're adorable and gorge and great so totally. i imagine guys are just like no give it another try like how do you how are you like i don't think so i try to be really honest and i just try to be really honest so you don't like the smell of their colon <laughs> yeah i just <laughs> you're yeah, boring wouldn't it be great if we just had that kind of like pheromone intuition and we could just sniff their butt right off yeah, and be like you you're smell, our person or you're not our person you smell too much like my brother i don't like you or like oh. something, something i did date a guy who smelled like balls <laughs> like but not on his balls like like around his Ew. like ear and his neck did he have a beard no what was it i think what? he was very unhealthy you know i think he i think he drank a lot of diet coke <gasps> really i'm serious he was what kind of addicted and then i'm trying to like think of the smell of 
balls, which is fun. And I'm like, you don't know, like you don't know until yeah. you smell it that that's balls. You know what I mean? It smells like salami. Salami smell is really important to me. Like pheromone. <laughs> me too. Like just Dustin's diving into right not good. Dustin is just shaking his damn head. Dustin, we may all need to smell you and see if you're our life Pass partner. Pass him around. Pass him around. <laughs> I feel like it's an, but I feel like, like if you go running, if you go running, if you eat a lot of salami, and you go running <laughs> and onions and stuff, and like you don't shower for a couple of days, I think a lady could smell like a ball. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you know what I but mean. But Allie, you had a good, you have a good description of your ex boyfriend <laughs> that he smelled like mushroom soup, oh, and it was yeah. like the perfect description: mushroom I, uh, fucking soup. I dated this guy like who fungus. Of mushroom yeah. soup. Oh, like dairy and fungus. Yeah, that's he was terrible. An ablutophobe. Do you know what that is? A what? An ablutophobe is someone no. who is uh, f- afraid of bathing or averse to bathing. And he also did not wear underpants and he wore a lot of polyester. And he was like, you know, if you crack open a, a, can, a Campbell's can of mushroom soup, your mom's making a casserole. Was he a, That's like was a cokehead in the 70s? I think he was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was, um, I mean, I was going to say it's unsavory, but it was actually very savory smelling. So I don't <laughs> have no problem. It was umami. I dated like, a guy who never wore deodorant ever. Was he and French? No, he's from Texas. Oh. No. He's from Austin, Texas, but he always smelled amazing. B.O. is so good when you like someone. Yeah. I love B.O. I actually kind of like, you know, I have this thing when people walk by me, I have this problem where I inhale because I want to smell them. Unless I do that like, too. Do you? I do that when I hug people a lot. Yeah. I really, I always inhale people. Like if I see a woman walking down the street and she's like in this great business suit and she looks all put together, I'm like, I bet she's, I bet she smells good. And then so when she walks by and the air passes me, I go, <laughs> and I can't help Such it. Same thing. Do you? Yeah. Or like I try not to do it with like gross looking people, but sometimes I fucking can't help. Like it's just this reaction I have. When you were a kid, did you smell things a lot? I had a blankie that I held to my nose with my thumb in my mouth constantly for the first five years of my life. Mm-hmm. What did it smell like? It smelled like old books and my mom and like this part smelled like hmm. grass and this part smelled like my saliva. Like I I would just smell it. Were yeah. You did you do that? That's weird. I never I, thought about that. I have always been smelling things yeah food and flowers and my hands and playground like there are things that I could still smell now and I'm like oh this reminds me of the way the slide smelled I'll smell my kindergarten like room sometimes me too like it's a plasticky weird paste yeah like paste yeah like plastic chairs and paste or something yeah Yeah, I know what you mean I hate that smell and then the smell of clipped grass smells like meth every fucking time like meth really yeah clipped grass is the best smell ever no it smells like meth I promise you. As a person who's had meth up her it nose boner. It smells like meth. <laughs> Cut grass. Did you, did you, when, you were, when you had a brief flirtation with meth uh-huh. as an unruly preteen, uh-huh. um, which people who've listened to the podcast know that Georgia <laughs> is has like come through the other side of like some Breaking Bad <laughs> of shit. Of some colon. Where did you grow up? Irvine. And was there a meth thing happening at the time? Yeah, or was it, it was okay. like a punk, like a gutter punk kind of. But do you snort it or smoke it? You, you can do both. It, right? You can do both. It's, which is a bigger pain in the ass? Uh, s- yeah, they're both fun because they're part of this like, they're part of this like routine or not routine but like ritual ritual. ritual. Yeah. So they're both fun. Mm-hmm. I guess when you're on meth too, you're like, I got all the energy in the world to yeah. smoke this. I'll put it in a needle. Yeah, I gotta, like <laughs> tidying up my whole house. I don't know. Oh yeah, I clean. I've cleaned so many houses on, on okay. meth. Let's not. I don't want to be a dick. And but it smells like grass because grass. It smells, smells like cut like grass. Innocence and spring to me. Also, the smell of Marlboro Red cigarettes. Mm-hmm brings me back yeah that reminds me of my family Maybe yeah my family reunion. that too my Shut dad used up. to save the little corner things and we would you know you get my marble miles. miles oh my god i forgot all about those yeah we have like marlboro bag duffel bags oh, and shit. jackets we would have bags of it like giant ziploc bags did you your dad smoked when you were a kid yeah did he smoke in the house no that's interesting i think it was the way he would get out of the house okay. yeah your ally your mom smoked didn't she yeah both my parents did and so smoking was always like something that adults do during like stressful tax season it was never like cool james dean shit but yeah mm-hmm. my mom would sit on like on the picnic table in the backyard just sucking away at it like a now light <laughs> i could see nancy fucking smoking that thing so hard would beg her to stop yeah we would make her booklets we would draw her pictures I oh, her for my stop. mom too it's so sad my mom would hide that she smoked but once in a while i would like smell it on her or see it in her bag or something and i'd just be like please i know uh, you, like, when you're a kid it's myself. like this is going to kill you soon yeah, yeah that's what you think, right? Do you You're think that's weirdly really traumatic? Do you think it's tra- do you think it's traumatic to as a kid to be like, please don't die on me yet? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I Is think it's weird? fucked up that we lie to our kids so much about what drugs and cigarettes are. I lie to my kids about everything. 
yeah. who their dad is, <laughs> who their mom why is. I put them in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> well, my ex, my ex had a 10 year old daughter who's now 23. And he was open with her about, you know, once she became at a certain age where she fucking knew that he smoked pot, you know, and he was just always open with her about it and about drinking what it is like, don't like don't do it alone with a bunch of people you don't know. Don't get drunk. Like just kind of cautionary stuff. And she's a fucking together. Awesome kid. Now person adult. She's a fucking adult. She's a 23 year old. adult. That's so weird. Audrey, you're the best. My parents were kind of okay with me drinking when I was like 15. I started like trying to drink and then by the time I was 19 I had a fake ID and was like getting drunk three times a week with my friends and then by the time I was 21 I was over it that's probably good that's fun okay and then when I could get into clubs and bars regularly I was like this is boring not as exciting no I'd rather go do a play how'd you get a fake ID oh my god I grew up in LA they were everywhere it was only after 9-11 that it was hard I got one I got one in 2000 and no god and i'm not that young 1996 or so in mm-hmm. la like one made with my name on it and shit, yeah right? i had one really? with my name on it and like i remember having to go get a picture oh my god yeah and i worked at a club on santa monica and like uh Holy shit crescent heights I, I think it's called voyeur now or something oh my god what kind of club was it was it just- it was just a dance club santa monica but i worked crescent at like heights? the ticket booth when i was 16 that's and not where a fake id underground was was it's it? across the street from laurel hardware i don't know where that is either remember do you 7969 remember? santa monica boulevard oh my god you're like I, you still use that as your mailing address <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that I, this is way back but if you lived in in la on the corner of crescent heights there used to be a place called splash and it was a yes. hot tub rental place yes. by the hour it was on they would go there for all the blind, blind date shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it was day. just like every they had themed hot tubs and i feel like every single one was just a jizz cauldron like totally. it was just, like it was like grottos like <sighs> you can rent a grotto for the hour ew so right told me some horror stories about hot tubs and i just can't enjoy them anymore don't tell me i'm about oh, to move into apartment disease? we've discussed legionnaires disease what are the problems tell me now so I can just like like a, a soup for fungus Fuck. you know Fuck. it's just hot water and people put Boiling. their dirty butts in it oh <laughs> i knew it i fucking know this i went to the yeah. korean spa a couple weeks ago you guys do that right oh it's great mm-hmm. i love it and um there was a woman who just had like some kind of weird outbreak all over her butt oh boy and I couldn't go back in the jacuzzi what after the that. And then the next day, I thought I had pink eye. Oh, my God. Or, or a sty or something. And I was just like, this is fucked up. <laughs> but you just had oh, a carbon monoxide no. leak. Are you sure it wasn't a carbon monoxide leak? <laughs> Wait, did you? <laughs> I realized the ghost had punched me in the eye. And she'd never had a dog to begin with. So we couldn't have been scratching at the door. It was scratching at her butt. Maybe she had a dog scratching at her butt. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe That's she fair. had a, maybe she had a gas leak, That's or maybe fair. her butt had a gas leak. I don't know. God, I know. I. Ugh, but gross. you know what? There's a lot of chlorine. Okay. That's good, but not at the spas because they're oh, like supposed not? to be like natural yeah. water. Oh, I didn't realize that. That um, scares me. Ugh. This is why I can't take a bath in my shower where I take shower because why? Oh, I also went off before bed. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Okay, because I pee in the shower. <laughs> it's another episode. I went off it's about peeing in the shower. I think everyone pees in the shower. I thought so too, and then I went off about it, and now I'm like, oh, that's gross. No, you're fine. fine. Honesty okay. is a good thing. Be honest with your kids. Tell them not. To to, they can you smoke pot and you pee in the shower. <laughs> yeah, you don't even. Smoke I don't pot. smoke pot. What? It's a way to save. Right. Water. It's like relaxing. Okay, sure. Anyway, I won't go into it you're again. Fine. You're fine. Um, any other slumber party questions? Um, let's ask book club. Are you reading anything oh, yeah. cool? Do you like anything? Are you any books that you're like, ah, oh, that's a good book? Um, I just finished Amy Poehler's book, and oh. now I'm reading three books. I'm reading um, short stories by Oscar Wilde. Oh, which is so lovely. Um, it's just like reading yourself a bedtime story, you know. Aww. And then um. I'm reading This I Know For Sure by Oprah Winfrey. Nice. Holy shit. Is that the one that looks like it's in a little tweed cover? It's like a very yes, small very book. Yes, cute. When was it put out? I don't know. Is I it an old one? or? I don't think it's an old one. That's awesome. But it's I a wee it's... little book. It's a darling little cute. book. Yes. It's what kind of cute. What kind of wisdom does it contain? It's like, it, it. she talks about, there's like some spiritual aspects that, because she is like, you know, Super Soul Sunday. And then there's also... <laughs> Um, parts of it that are just like th- what I know for sure is that Gail's a good friend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm phoning it in for this page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that someone else wrote this and thought that I would add stuff, but I'm not. She's probably got a lot of good. I mean, 
She probably keeps it simple. Yeah, she's got and, some but cool then also stuff has some about deep gratitude stuff. and like yeah. being in awe of the moment, which I I really love. I need to hear that constantly, like, but then I always roll my eyes at it. But I secretly I'm like, yeah. I think well, there was a moment where she like good. she talks about like you know I'm a girl from Mississippi and now look at where yeah. I am. Like isn't that crazy? And I'm like, yeah, that is crazy. And it's like fun to do that with your own stories about totally. like that shitty thing that I went through and now I'm here and like pretty happy and have good people in my life. Like I did meth and now I don't do drugs anymore. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's amazing. Like that's something to super be proud of yourself. That is for. fun to do that, to be like I sometimes will put an an old photo of me and like if I can't sleep at night and put it next to a new one and be like, that girl would never have known that that girl was going to, that's weird. For real. No, I think that that's dope. I love that. What else are you reading? Um, Dancing Wooly Masters. What's that? It's on uh, physics. I just started it. I really like um, Neil deGrasse Tyson mm. a lot. And I really like Cosmos. And I dropped out of high school, so I don't know a lot about science. Hmm. So it's a very layman's introduction to physics. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'd read that. Yeah. But it's really hard. Like, I have to go back and, like, reread everything because I'm, I'm first of all, I'm not a great reader. I'm a little dyslexic. I am dyslexic. Mm-hmm. And um, Are you I'm a slow reader. totally super dyslexic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind. I'm totally blind, so I'm not a great reader. <laughs> like, totally, completely. Like, completely? What's that? I don't know. I, uh, it's hard for me to, dark. like, read. Like, I I'm, I'm mix up the order of letters, mm-hmm. and then I mix up the order of words next to each other. So I have to like, sometimes I have to move my lips, that helps me, or I have to follow with a pen, or I have to like cover the space below or beneath. There was this app that actually, I don't know if it came out or not, but where it helped you speed read, that was like one word at a time. It was called like, not Stitch, I don't know this. I forget what it was called, but it was, yeah, it was great. Instead of your your eyes scanning a page and going all the way, like a typewriter, like dick, 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 Mm -hmm. back, dick, 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 Mm -hmm. it just flash the words in front of you oh wow yeah. and you could read like 500 words a minute holy insane. shit yeah that worked really well for me wow i've been waiting i wonder what the uh, status is because that they're like a kickstarter came out to develop that software to turn pretty much anything any ebook but yeah you just look it, would, it was crazy how fast you could read mm-hmm. yeah that's not really great moving your eyes laterally you know but i mean i think that reading i think with anything if you want to absorb it it's good to just read slow and take your time and go over it and yeah and underline things and I take notes and that's try to amazing. Just really that's do great. That. It's so great that you love reading. Being single and reading a lot go hand in hand. Totally. Yeah, that's true. So do being in a relationship for a year and a half. <laughs> and you're like, I'm gonna go read. Mm-hmm. I'm reading a book about five points gang or the five points, not the gang, but five points in New York during the 1800s. It's yeah, 1800s. It was a, the the like. One of the worst sections of the like of the world was the five points in New York where these five streets met up. And it was like the most de- de- degrading, disgusting place with like prostitutes and drugs and all kinds of fucked up and tenements. And that's where they put they threw all of the uh, immigrants and stuff. And so it's just like the crazy shit that went on there. Was and it- then Donald Trump shows up and exactly. cleans it up. Exactly. Did you see fi- um, Gangs of New York? No, but I heard that the accents yeah, in it were that's, questionable, but oh. also the history was interesting. That's where, it, that's this kind of place. Wow. What year is that? That's like, it, start, it started in 1820, but then like in 1860 is when it started to get really fucked up. And then they just fucking raised everything and built other shit there. It's now Chinatown in New oh, York. Oh, cool. I How's know. Leo in that? Leo so looking his his bones, is cheekbones. He ever not good in anything. I mean, I know you guys. You know what's interesting is how come no one ever? How come Leonardo DiCaprio isn't on every single tabloid being like, "Will Leo ever get married?" Oh, because he's not a woman. Is that your yeah. point? Yeah. <laughs> and he also like owns dating the hottest women in the world. Yeah. And he's like, "This is what I do. This is my thing." No one ever laments that he's not a father. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. is he ever gonna have a kid? His sperm is dying on the daily. Oh, and then it's a picture of him like with a furrowed brow. And it's like, he's so worried about his fertility. (laughs) And really, he's just like feeding a parking meter. (laughs) He doesn't feed parking meters. Of course he doesn't. What am I thinking? (laughs) Of course he doesn't. Um, Well, should we do... Oh, oh, one thing I wanted to say. One book that I started reading a couple episodes ago. And then I put it down and I wasn't Mm -hmm. into it. And then I was like, I felt guilty because it was like sitting neglected on my nightstand. Mm Mm-hmm. And I cracked back into it and I was like, this book is great. Is The Circle by Dave Eggers. Ooh. And it's about like a, it's kind of black mirror-y 
it's like in the very near future about how technology will own us all. But it's really interesting and it's quite a page turner. I dig it. It's interesting. So I feel I like Dave Eggers. Um, I do too. I'm a fan. Yeah. Um, okay. And so we all will be robots. And absolutely. Yeah. We will not singularity is a real thing. We're going to be run by little things inside of us that fix our bladders before we know we have problems with them. Yeah. We'll be quote ourselves. I was just. But not. <laughs> But we'll be run by uh, 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 the Turing test. Will An not app. be able to yeah. see whether or not. I feel like it's the thing that's <laughs> going to take all your information about you and be like, okay, I can be you, mm-hmm. and then try to be you, but it's not going to be you. I met the guy who invented. You guys ready for this? Yesterday, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I met the man. His name is Marty Cooper. He does not have that accent, but he invented cell phones. Shut the fuck up. Motherfucker wow. invented cell phones in 1973. He made the first cell phone call. He worked for Motorola. He developed cell phones, and he's like, we not were talking about the future. No, he had a team, but he's the he pioneered the technology of wow. um of uh oh my gosh circuitry the type of circuit. Engineers are so very wealthy now. He does drive a Tesla. Oh God, and he loves only his wife. Fancy thing he I really am wife. dying for. Nice he cars. loves his wife. He loves his wife. They met in 1979. She also is in telecommunications. Oh my God. She pioneered a bunch of t- uh, cell phone technology. Her name is Arlene. Oh, they, Arlene. His, his Tesla has a license plate with his initials, a heart, and her initials. That's the dream. And how do you know 80. that he loves his wife? I mean, besides the license plate. Like, did you guys talk about that? Yeah, he talked about how um, Ar- he said uh, that Arlene is his number one and Aww. that she's great. And then she, she couldn't be at the shoot because she was, she was under the weather. But... He was talking about um, wearable technology, and he's like, "It's just going to be a chip. Jesus. It's just going to be a chip behind your ear. Like, yeah. deal with it." I want to. I want a Marty for my Arlene. I know, I yeah. know, I know. But Marty, Marty and Eileen, they, they, Arlene, they sound like they sound like uh, Marty and Elaine at yeah. the people that do the lounge singing. But anyway, um, <laughs> I wonder how. I wonder if she talks about him when he's not around. In the same oh way. yeah, I think that they're. I think that they're. They seem like as in love as people in their eighties who have changed the world can be and have like gone through so much shit together anyway sorry cell phones you guys cell phones they're gonna rule us all but should we do fuck that let's do fuck that let's fuck that so okay. what, tell, tell us what fuck that is ali well okay so fuck that's a <laughs> gamey play and um it's one thing that you hate so much you're like fuck that i hate that so much and another yeah. thing that we love so much we would just lay it down and slow bone it and touch its face and they could be anything they don't have to be mm. human beings they could be like it could be a cheese it could be um, racism. It could be yeah. anything you like, as you do. Right. Um, yeah. So we'll start with our hates. That way we end on a positive note because we are hashtag grateful. Okay. <laughs> We're a hashtag please. Please. <laughs> um, Georgia, what's one thing you hate? I hate that. I hate when bathrooms and like your apartment, you can't turn on the light without turning on the overhead fan, <laughs> and the overhead fan has to be on at all times. It's the worst noise. I fucking hate it. Like your yeah. face right now, fucking hate it. <laughs> it will drive me out of my goddamn mind. That no, that noise really, really bothers yeah. me. Yeah, I know that is terrible. Do you have that here? No, but I looked at an apartment that I might move into, and it has that, and like, everything else is great about the apartment. Way to check for that. I would have totally neglected. Oh that. my god, I can't deal with it. Can you shove a popsicle stick in there? I was thinking about that, but what mm-hmm. if it starts a fire and then causes black mold in my bathroom mm. too? Mm. You don't want that. What do you hate, Allie? Um. I hate it when you are at a lecture or a show or or like a music show or like a movie and your friends are the people who are murmuring Mm. inconsiderately. Oh, shit. Or they try to talk to you. Like you're at a music show and it's quiet and the person next to you is – your friend is like trying to talk to you. And you – if you engage with them, you're just being so disrespectful. But if you ignore them, you're being rude. Mm. And so they're your friends and so you don't want to be like – you can't be like, can you please? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because – they're your friends. But they're, it's so clear that they're disrupting the whole oh energy God, of the room. That would, oh, I can't. I, I think I've picked it. friends that just fucking aren't like that. Oh, or I've it. shushed my friends before. Oh, that Does terrible. that ever happen? Have you ever been performing and you hear like a murmur and you want to kill someone? I think I... I, I don't I don't. Or have I don't, you been at a show remember. and that happens? Oh, fuck. You know what actually bothers me at shows? This isn't gonna... This wasn't gonna be my fuck this. But when I go to a concert and it's a, a sit-down venue... And I want to dance, and no one's dancing. Yeah, and I'm like, like gyrating in my seat, Ooh, and what's like, what's wrong with you like people? Grinding my teeth because all I want to do is get up and shake it, and no one else is. That sounds like the like the the plot of a movie. Yeah, <laughs> right. Definitely a music video, at yeah. least, <laughs> where someone just erupts in booty shaking. <laughs> finally, at the end, glitter comes pouring out of my eardrums. <laughs> 
I love it. That's cute. Uh, what's anything your, else you hate? Yeah, what's I was going to say, um, like, talking shit, like, gossiping, it really, I've... I've gotten really sensitive to it. Like, I don't like hearing my friends gossip about people that they wouldn't say it to their face. And I don't like when I catch myself doing it. Yeah. Like, it really bothers me when I'm like, I'm better than this. And if it's really bothering me, I want to be the kind of person that could just talk to my friends about it. And um, it's just such a mean thing to do. And I want to be better than that. That's all. That's a good That's a way to live thing. your life, I think. It's a super good way to live your Sometimes life. Sometimes I'll notice... I'm saying something and I don't think it's gossip and then I'll stop and be like, what if someone was talking to you about this specific, like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be hateful or shitty or mean spirited to be gossip. And so mm -hmm. I've been trying to point that out to myself. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you know the, the like, the ick line, like when you've crossed an ick line, if you're like, did you hear about that? She's got, maybe get this job, but she's not sure she's like, what yeah. point when you're telling, when you're telling a story about someone, do you know what I mean? I think if it's like good news, if you're like happy for them when you're saying it, mm -hmm. if you're like, you know, I hope they get this job and you're like sending out positive vibes, <laughs> then it's okay. But if you're like, yeah, like he's dating this girl now and she's like not very fun. Oh, then it's yeah. like, you know, then it's like it's not your thing to tell and just find other and things to talk about. And, you know, I do think it's kind of sad, but very true that we bond with people over like disliking a thing together or, you know, shitting on something together or That's being true. sad about something together. And I don't want to build relationships on that. You should build them on cheese. <laughs> on little cheese houses, which brings me to my love. What's your love? Wait, we're going to end on your love. Are we gonna love on, we're going to love on I've your end. I said my love. Should I come up with a different one? It's up to you. Uh, going. Okay, Allie, what do you love? Um, One thing I love. Uh, by the way, I think that that's a great, I think yeah. that that's a great thing. And also someone was, I forget where I heard this. I heard it somewhere stupid probably. But um, where someone was getting married and the they had like a pact where they're like pretend like i can see what you're doing would you do it you know what i mean oh. like like pretend that whatever you're doing would you want me to see what you're doing like you linger with a drink with your work lady co-worker for yeah. too long do you want me to see that and yeah. then like thinking about like if your significant other or whatever or whoever you're talking about could hear or see what you're doing would you do it and that's like a good test of like you know what no i wouldn't feel good about that i forget where i heard that it's kind of like also you were talking about your friend talking about her new Bose butt stuff. Yeah. Like, would he <laughs> want her to be talking about that totally. to her friends? I don't know. Like, is that talking shit, even if it's your own shit? I don't know. Was I, I, I was talking shit about No, you her. were telling a story with no names involved. I yeah, yeah. No. Situation. That's funny. No. I am also, by the way, super happy for them. <laughs> yeah. They found I each am other. super happy for them. Yeah. Good for them. I just didn't know what face to make. Well, we always say... Because if you're too interested, you know when you someone's telling a story and if you, you want to ask follow-up questions, like... Oh, you're gonna move? What's the place like? Tell me about it. But I, it's yeah. one of those delegate situations where you, the more detail you ask, the creepier you sound. But if you don't ask more details, then you seem inconsiderate. It's so a really hard like? line. A really hard line to to keep going. But um, okay. we always say um, at the end of something, if we've if we've crossed the line, we'll say wishing them well. You but I what? wish her. But I wish, wish them well. well. I think that Oprah said that. Really? Oh, I got it. I think I got that off an of Oprah thing actually. Uh, wishing them well. I, uh, I know for sure. Wish them well. Wish them well. Um, um, what do you... One thing I love? Yeah. Um, that, can I say two things? Because I think one of them is kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I really love the smell of tiger lilies. Ooh. If you purchase some tiger lilies at TJ's, Trader Joe's, five no, bucks. I'm going to go do that. That's a good idea. Your whole house smells uh, fucking amazing. Take the little stamens out. You know, those things oh. that drop pollen. Yeah. Those black things at the end of the stalks. Pop those off as soon as you can, and then they won't drip pollen that stains everywhere. Good to know. That. But I also like Nordstrom Rack for shoes. I think that you can get some like, excellent deals on <laughs> shoes. And mm -mm. it's one of those, you know how you go to Ross and like you, you look at their shoes and you're like, what a bargain. But like there's one sandals over here and then like a yeah. pops over there and like they're not the same size. And you're like, they're, eh. but you can actually, Nordstrom Rack is that perfect balance between like, these are great shoes for $20, but they retail for like 100 Yeah. Word. So I think that that's a great balance. That's Quality a at a value. Yes. <laughs> no, they're not paying me to say this. Georgia, what do you love? <laughs> uh, mine's quick. I love that my mom didn't name me the other name they were thinking <laughs> of naming me, which, oh, I'm going to insult everyone named Gloria right now. 
Gloria's. How, he, how are you a Jew with the name Georgia? How did that happen? My grandfather's name was George, and he died oh. before I was born. Mm-hmm. It's actually pronounced George. Mm-hmm. Well, my Hebrew name is Galit. Really? Galit? Yeah. I love that name too. I didn't know that Do you, you know what Galit means. Had one? Uh, it's like little doe kind of a thing. Oh, like a like a doe eyed deer. Yeah. That's a, what's your Hebrew name, Alana? Ariella. Ooh. I don't. That's, I didn't know that you guys got bonus names. Well, I named myself. That's when dope. I was 21, I had my bat mitzvah. That's awesome. And I got to pick a Hebrew name. Holy shit. And I'm like, Ariel is beautiful, and it means lioness of God. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah, a 20, I didn't know you could you could pause, press pause on You can Barbara. do whenever you, could you do want. It whenever you want. You yeah. could do it if you wanted to totally. become I a Jew. I want to be Jewish so bad, I know. you guys. It's, r- so it's, a real, it's like not. a 13-week course. I could do that, you guys. I would be better now at it than I was when I was 13, because I didn't give a fuck when I was 13, and I didn't understand the history and the, like traditions and shit and i was just like this is stupid i know and when you're made to do something you don't enjoy it yeah. as much as when you choose to is it dif- is it difficult to convert would they let me it would let you it's an really? it's a, in, it's intensive i can introduce you to my friend who did it <gasps> and i really think it's a 13 week course and then you I get a become well. jewish you guys you should do it ali i would but the thing is i would throw that down on every bio i could possibly write at the end it would just be like and she's jewish <laughs> so i'd be like hell yeah i am i'd be like if i got certified for cpr i'd want to tell everyone yeah that's okay true. what's one thing you love um cuddling with dogs yay yeah. <laughs> no i love it no it's the best it's the i was best. gonna say cheese but i um i've been staying at my mom's house because she's out of town and I've been cuddling her dog, and it just is the world. It's just the world. What kind of dog is it? It's a little Yorkie. Oh. And she's so sweet, and she she kisses me, and Aww. she snuggles into my neck, and it's like a stuffed animal. Like, you used to sleep with a stuffed animal, but oh. it's a real breathing little, like, snoring thing, and her snores are so cute. Oh, my God. And Yorkies poop Tootsie Rolls. Like, it is no big deal <laughs> it's a to joy. pick that shit up. It's a joy. Sometimes I can't even find it. <laughs> That's the that's the like the highest of picking up poop is that sometimes you can't find it. That's oh, the best it could a be. Tiny a tiny dime bag and some tweezers and it's good to go. But what is um are Yorkies was it was the Yorkie hard to potty train? Or she, they're they're uh, smart they're smart right? Super smart. My mom doesn't even put her on a leash. Oh. Like she just follows us wow. around. And um and now we my mom has a little backyard so she just stays she What's just opens name? the door. Zyosia. It's a Russian name that no one can re- It's actually a really douchey name to give an animal in America cuz every time somebody oh, yeah. asks you what the dog's name is you're like Zyosia and they're like Zosia and you're like no. It's really <laughs> more like Zyosia. It's more like Zyosia. You wouldn't get it. Oh, Zosha? <laughs> no. You're still kind of doing it a little bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um let's wish that Yorkie well. <laughs> Oh, what do you want to plug? Oh yeah, tell us about oh, your show coming okay, up. Okay, okay, I'm doing. Um, I'm I'm in this show that comes out on Yahoo. Oh my god, that's great! So hopefully somebody yeah. will go to Yahoo.com. I think people do that. Yeah. And um, watch the show called Other Space, and it's um made by this guy named Paul Feig who made Freaks and Geeks and uh, Bridesmaids. Holy yeah. Shit. And so and he's he, making the new Ghostbusters. And he's making the new Ghostbusters and this movie Spy. And Dang. so he's a brilliant person. And um. It's like a it's a sci fi comedy in the future and in space. So That's awesome! It's a dream. It's a dream, Where and I get to be a total lunatic. You're, what kind of lunatic are you? Like an oversexed, selfish, crazy person. It's great. I'm. I think I make out with everyone in the 